EG get to pick sides. And EG have opted to go to attack first and obey band Ash right off the board, not allowing NVK, his favorite operator, to. That makes sense because NVK was a big problem. To be fair, he was a big problem on the IQ as well. And it's just one of those things where, you know, you want to get a bit more control and, and it's less important on this map. I, you know, it's always great to have an IQ, but when they're bringing Valkyrie, when they're bringing Mozzie consistently and they're using that quite violently outside, you've got to bring some kind of answer. Jackal is taken off as well. And that's a good response to what was a very good operator in the hands of Obey. I mean... <sighs> I, I'm, I'm kind of okay with that Obey ban, because you were talking like cosigns mostly fraggers anyway, so yeah. just taking one of the fraggers off the board when you know you start defense can be a good way to go about it. We're going to see the EG defense ban is going to be the Valkyrie, which was very effectively used on a border by Abadai, so definitely a very fair ban coming out from EG there. That's going to leave Obey with the final ban. Now the question is, do they take Mirror off the board or do they not? I'm going to guess they might ban Obey. Uh, Echo, I know. No, they take Mirror off the board. So that leaves both Maestro and Echo available here. Kind of a rare sight to see on Coastline. Yeah, I think you kind of look at the ways that they can play it and the players that can play them, and, and you think, okay, well, why have they kind of slipped that through? Obviously, Mirror often gets taken off, and that makes the penthouse side pretty pretty tough. I think pretty tough is a, is a fair way of breaking oh, it oh, down. Oh. A lion in the hands of Geo. And we actually saw this a fair bit when they were running before, actually. We it saw was... it from EG. We also saw it from Liquid. And we saw it from MIBR as well on Coastline. We've seen it quite a lot of time across the OGA season. A lot of teams are a big fan of lion pushing here. And I'm kind of with it because he's got a great gun. You can add to that kind of fragging lineup, but also he can, you know, you're not taking anything away from your attacking lineup utility by bringing him. So Geo will indeed to pick on to that line and bring it ahead. And we'll see the double French coming out from Obey. Yeah, and four ACOGs is kind of what's screaming in my head as I look at this Obey lineup. And I feel like we're going to get some first round counter aggression. Um, I, you know, it's one of those things where you can run that kind of level of aggression if you're confident and capable. We saw them trying some very early aggressive peaks. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but obviously they're great operators too. Whenever I see a Rook ACOG alongside a Duck ACOG, I'm like, they're going to be silly aggressive. <laughs> like, every time. Yeah, I mean, it, it's coastline, right? You can get aggressive with it and you can really utilize these ACOGs, especially on spawn peaks. Having impacts is very, very useful on this map as well. Just because it's, it's very difficult to make those rotates perfect with the shotgun. So yeah, impact does make it through. Oh, the coach has Ember Rise this time. Well, at least it's fair. One's There's one. There's some good sportsmanship going through good so sport. far. Yeah, it's really nice to see when teams are kind of a little bit more open to discussing it like adults. Here's the drone. Call out, here's the drone, and he's going to use that moment to go. <laughs> I'm going to pull back. Uh, well, it's going to be MVK who gets the opening frag of the round. It really has been the story of MVK versus Abadai so far on those opening frags. Yeah, and I think that's a battle that's going to continue for all of this day. <laughs> I think Abadai's generally been better off the bat at finding them, but MVK does have two for his name on the previous map, and, well, that makes it three now across the day. And, you know, it's one of those things, as we said, he was a player that really kind of when things started to at the beginning look like it could get away from them, went, no, 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 we're, we're playing this. Well, we see MVK just shutting down the courtyard, rotates here, as Mo makes his way through into the Sunrise Bar, and sees exactly what he can do. Lots of drones coming out from EG across the board here, and they'll have a look exactly what the situation is. But they've already found the opening frag onto the Echo, that's definitely a big, big frag coming out from EG so far. And the rest of this should be pretty good for them, honestly. Oh, that is a very dangerous rotate. What is happening right now? Obey are dropping straight into sight lines as Forest somehow picks up that kill into Mo. I love that, that they just went, juice me up, I'm going in. <laughs> and then they just filled him with dot needles and let him hot drop down into a firefight he knew was going to happen. Well, he's managed to find his way back around with cool vibes. He's being called and he's going to pre-fire his rotate. One person hasn't picked up Rokama, and that's kind of sad. But Grixer finds... MVK takes him out of the equation. There's still one call and two frag grenades in the pocket of the KB, and they have the utility, of course, of Young to double down and one E, one D to make it all kind of come together. With a minute 10, that's plenty of utility and plenty of positioning to find their way across against, well, three ACOGs, pricking aggressive firefights. 
Yeah, call out. Definitely able to do some work here. There's still decent wow, utility up from Obey, and of course it is a 3v3. There's no man advantage either way. But EG are running out of time, and they're running out of their own utility as well to use up. Getting call out out from behind this bar is going to be very difficult. But he might not even have to because he doesn't really have the utility to be able to threaten EG's plant potential here. As it looks like they're going to go mainly for this aquarium take. As now Crocs are going to be moving around the other side. It's like... Those, uh, Zofia charges are going to go out to make sure there's no ADSs in sight. So that Jung can just take this Maisho camp off the board. And that won't threaten their plant potential. Oh, Necrocs will find that kill onto Grixa, however, from the Hookah Bal. Because Jung will actually go down this planter out of it. And that is Diffuser down as well. It's all down to Forest. EG cannot plant right now. As far as tries to get aggressive with it right now. Necrox is on that hookah balcony. Takes out Geo. No, he won't. I thought for sure he was going to win that gunfight. But Geo will take him down with a headshot. Deadly. Mexican comes through. And round number one will go through into the favor of EG. Yeah, great, great reactions there from Geo to be able to find the bodies as he cleared and greened his way across this coastline. Putting themselves one step ahead on this first round. Could be vital, but I guess we'll see how Obey respond, whether they try and match the same level of aggression or pull back on the throttle just a little bit. You can see they're discussing it at least this time round, and we're currently careening ourselves towards a similar round. They're not hiding the lion this time. However, it's actually Mo that's going to be currently bringing the mantle, and Mozzie is going to be the change on the side of the defenders for now. So, the Hookah Lounge and Village Room defense coming through here for Obey. Let's have a look exactly how it's going to go through. Also, CEG bringing a very similar lineup to what they were bringing the first time. In fact, the exact same lineup coming up from them, except from the Habana being brought by Young instead of Zofia. Attackers need to locate and Definitely like a bit of Habana being brought here. Especially, kind of like, trying to get Call Out out from behind this bar was a big issue. And yeah. just being able to open up this, this sight line here. Because NVK spent a lot of time on that courtyard roof to be able to shut down the rotates. That's just giving him more sight lines to be able to look into and threaten the positions of defenders. Yeah, it just allows you to be a little bit more kind of aggressive in particular about how you can, as you said, open up the sight lines and get those kind of controls without forcing you to step for step all the way into point. Obviously, I'm curious to see how Mo picks up the mantle. Obviously, Geo absolutely tore through with the lion and to kind of take him off and add him to someone else, you've got to be like, okay, well, you know, where's the truster? Yeah, Mo's an amazing player, but I guess it's always the mantra of if it's not broken and you've changed it, yeah, I want to know why. Lion definitely brings that mantle of responsibility to himself, I suppose. Very, very powerful utility. Got to use it wisely. Far is going to go for his own spawn peak here, it looks like. As Abanai getting ready for his run out up onto DJ. This could be very dangerous to do as Obey looking to get very aggressive with it very early on. They do go for the peaks. Abanai not able to find anything just yet. I do like this peak angle coming out from Abanai, but it's a very easy one to shut down if people are prepared for it. Well, in the meantime, he's losing his mind a little bit as he's waiting and he's gone, not going to bother with it. But if you see, there's a body on the top center of coastline. The vibrations have shaken the poor man in the far side, and he's going to steadily try and make his way clearer, but as long as there's an angle being held on the top of the danger donut, it's not the easiest way to rotate all the way back to. In the meantime, there is the billiards window, and the aggression of Geo finds Grixa. Still has two frag grenades, which can be used to try and burn across and blow the man out of the back bar. I guess we'll see how they decide to step and throttle this up. So, drones are going to go out in heavy amounts here, EG getting ready for some sort of push here. Adius are going to get burned on blue, and Mo early to try and find a frag here, but not quite yet going in his favor. It's about halfway through the round right now, Obey are at a man deficit, but they have loads of utility still available to them, as well as quite a few positions still available to them as well. Young trying to find some damage across this hookah side and throwing the stuns through to see if they can catch anyone's eyes and I guess potentially burn something as Geo goes underneath. Jumps on a sofa and is going to try and frag grenade up through the roof. Potentially no. He's actually going to look for the firefight directly instead. Trying to double down and bury down the ADS. And here's the frag grenade attempted to bounce into the far corner where someone was previously. No luck. No catch and no bite. So instead going to drop the maestro cam, which very well works. Together as Mo finds execration. 
Things looking really good for EG so far. They've got a lot of control for themselves, but still unable to push Forrest out of these blue stairs. But as I say that, he does start to get pushed up there. He's going to drop very, very low HP. Abadai tries to go for a rotate, but gets shut down by Geo. And now we're in a 5v2. Obey Alliance is scattered quite heavily, but Carl does manage to drag out back. And VKK does go down, and the push starts to come through up on the blue. There goes Forrest. He does manage to keep Geo, but Carl out finds one as well on the free frag. This is looking beautiful for Obey to bring back. As the bearing nine does come out, but no, there goes one, and there goes two, as EG lock it out for themselves. I mean, EG, they're coming in hot, they're coming in strong, and they're coming in very good. They're able to find these rounds, find these bodies, and keep well, finding holes in Obey's defense. Hoping that Obey don't go for Hooker again, and in fact, try a different site, try and break the mold and the pattern, and they are. They're going to take Kitchen instead and give themselves a little bit of breath of a fresh air. You've got to remember this was obviously their map choice. This is where they wanted to come to, and so far, EG have shown up pretty well. And obviously, last time they were here, as we said, it was an 8-7 in their favor against Shrug, but it was a very, very close for fights. I guess we'll see if Obey have a little bit more up their sleeve. You've also got to realize that obviously EG opted for attack first here, potentially opting to try and get as much of this continual pressure from their attacks in the previous game, carry that momentum over potentially, but I guess only time will tell. Only time will tell indeed. EG looking very strong on their attacks here so far. As we'll push into round number three, we see the alibi coming out. This is kind of like the Attack only site in potentially all of Rainbow where I really like Alibi's utility here. Specifically because of the kitchen window. Um, because you can't upside down repel on it, you can't get rid of the um, the Alibi that way. You have to either go above and destroy it that way, or you just jump in and you jump into it, right? Like, it gives out utility. So. You can see already Call has put one of them down there, and we'll see where the rest of them do go, but there's uh, there's definitely good utility usage of Alibi here, and that is not something I often say. Yeah, I know you've got opinions on Alibis on certain points, and this is potentially one of them. I think the thing about, you know, it really, it's the breakdown of how teams utilize the information game, because it's not really to fool people. It's to catch pre-fires and to catch jumpers. That's what you would, sure. That's what she does at this level. Um, and, you know, it, the ability to kind of get the fast movements, the ability to know that EG are a team that does pre-fire and, and does try and get those standards, if you can find a way to react against that, and in the same time, double down and stumble eg that yep. can really be a big play in your favor it can also be a good way to like protect your rotates as well and you'll see alibis have gone down onto one of the rotates but it's the nvk again picking up an opening frag call out gonna go down very early on and that is alibi already off the board as i was about to start singing her praises forest already getting caught out as well himself by necrox and this is looking beautiful for eg so far Lion charges are going to go out. Doku becomes go out as well on top of that. And this is looking horrible for Obey's roam game as they retreat all the way back to the site. Oh, Gotta give credit to what EG are currently doing on this map. Everything seems calculated well put together. And MVK is storming his way through a second. Grixer at least finds the refrag. And there's Zephyr off the board as well from deep just as a ping goes out, which can buy them a little bit of breathing room. But they're still in a 3-2. And Abinai is a little bit injured. Mo drops the alibi to allow them a, a bit of an entry without being immediately spotted as Geo still digs for gold from above and can't quite find anyone just yet. They have a frag grenade. They have two frag grenades upstairs as well, bringing the total to three. And that is a lot of possibility to force people into, well, force them away from places unless they want to die and into more, well, controlled spaces. The man on the far side you may see towards the opposite side of the map is going to potentially allow a bit of space to collapse. But in the meantime, leaving just one on point, I guess it's a gamble that we'll see if it pays off or not. You're going to be moving on the way through to the kitchen service entrance and EG attempting to lock down the site from all sides as Necrox slowly creeps his way into site. He does have Diffuser in hand. Line Charge is going to go out and Mo is going to hop in and cover the Diffuse plant with a prone angle, it takes down Grixer. It's all down to Abanai to try and bring this in as Diffuser successfully gets planted, but there goes Mo. Abanai in a 2v1 now to try and bring this in. Nays are going to go out, but there he goes. An evil genius is taking round number three, their third consecutive attack in a row. Obey Alliance getting torn apart here on Coastline. 
Yeah, this is really, really well strung together from EG. Everything seems fluid, everything seems coordinated, and these attacks, from what I said at the beginning of this play day, was this is where they've looked the shakiest. Yeah, These have looked exceptional. Before we start, you know, people in Twitch chat, I'm sure, like, Obey Trash, oh, what's going on? This isn't a full five-man Obey here. Execration, the coach has stepped in, as Fozo is attending his sister's wedding. So, you know, I, I feel like this isn't a good indication of how Obey will play in Pro League, which obviously is, is a couple of months down the line still for them. But it's definitely a good indication of their potential as a roster. We already saw them take EG to OT, and we haven't seen Obey's own attacks either. Clearly, EG think that this is a very attacker-sided map right now, especially with the way that they wanted to do their bans, and the way that they're playing it right now, definitely very attacker-sided. So we haven't seen Obey's attacks yet. Well, let's wait just a moment as we've got a couple of rounds left. We're on the 3-0. Obviously, the previous turn of the half and border was 3-3 and then another 3-3. So we never know if they can find their way back round to a little bit more of a balance here. They're going to opt for Kitchen yet again. Double down on the second time for the second point and see if they can make it work for the second time. Again, what EG have been doing has been very clinical. They've been so good at isolating the Obey players and then being able to shut them down. They've, from what, as I said before, has been shaky attacks and strategies has otherwise been pretty electric on this coastline. It's kind of tied into the aggression and the gun skill. MVK, as we said, is frequently getting the opening frags. There's a smiley face, Grixer. Thank you very much. We didn't quite see that last time. We saw an unhappy face from Goddess. Yeah, just to balance out the unhappy face yeah, we got that's true. earlier. That's a good omen. It's only up from here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, EG looking pretty dominant so far, but Obey definitely on high hopes, it would seem. As we'll see exactly how they want to take this, but this Lion the KB strategy coming out from EG. Obey don't really seem to have an answer for it so far. We do see a mute making its way into their lineup, however. And I think this is exactly kind of what they need, especially with the Mozzie also making the entrance again. Well, digging their way via DJ to get more control. MVK, who has been pretty sensational this play day, is not going to stop the roll just yet. Droned ahead by Necrox and Young, so he can start finding bodies. In the meantime, it's just finding free real estate. As he creeps his way all the way across, drops the default camp gets himself ready to put a bit more pressure. In the meantime, Geo, another player who has really shown up, especially in the opening round on this, is ready to start cracking open the ground. And without any pressure from Obey, they're free to do what they want. Well, so Jones going to be coming out across the board here. NVK, I'm sure where this mozzie drone is himself, but Abadai already very, very lit up. Nitro will go out, but unfortunately will not hit its target. As Obey still holding on well, as another line charge will go out. If they do know this one in security right now, it looks like Geo is aware of the roamers on the board. Well, Mo is just keeping an eye on himself on 90 to see if they can force the Jaeger out round the backside and drop them. But in the meantime, Abonai is going to try and stick in and hold on for as long as possible. And luckily, the Doctor is in as he gets him up with his nice old cool vibes as he's vibe checked. But they're waiting for the pressure on Lambo as Forrest is actually going to rotate round and double down against the people on cool vibe stairs and make sure they keep a bit of a semblance of control there as MVK creeps closer and closer to Aqua. But the pre-fires alert everything that is going on. Abonai dances and turns around and pre-fires and brilliant, brilliant swing and combination of information there to do that, taking care of MVK and getting that opening frag in their favor. This is great stuff so far coming out from Obey. Great meeting of it as Forrest with a shotgun is going to take out Geo. We've still got the line up on the board and we still have the KB up on the board, but as I say that, oh my god, what a flick from Mo. Forrest goes down, but instantly gets traded out, coming out from Abadai from above. It's all going to be Young and Necrox to try and bring this in. Young scoring a great shot onto Grixer. This is going to start to wing favors a little bit more into the favor of EG. But they've still got a bit of an uphill battle as Abadai takes down Necrox's teammate of Young and leaves it all for him to do. He's still got two fire grenades on the board here to be able to do something if he wants to do it. But there's only 15 seconds left to move. Oh, there he goes. Well, that's a little bit of the confidence we're used to seeing from Obey, and it's nice to kind of see. If I'm honest, obviously they struggled for the first three rounds, and Abonai being free to do what he did. Obviously, if the opening frag had gone the other way, if MVK had taken care of the Jaeger on the far side, it could have been a completely different round, because that is yeah. the battle that generally all eyes have been on today.
I think the lineup is just way better from Obey there, like bringing a Legion, bringing a Mutant, a Mozzie together, and like yep. recognizing that the reason that they're losing is because EG is droning them out and then just pushing them immediately. Denying the drones, denying that area, denying the ability to use those decay B calls with the mute. It's definitely going to swing things into the favor of Obey. Finally finding their round on defense. They've got to find two more if they want to stand a chance of bringing this in, I think. But we haven't seen Obey's attack either, but we can see an echo being brought by them. Definitely good as well, like into this decay B strategy, but no Mozzie. No, they, they've opted to kind of move away from that they're looking at the information game of doubling up the maestro and the echo they are obviously the know they're playing against the lion pretty can. continually and they're still not opting for the view so far you know we've seen the lion pops go off and it does kind of freeze you up but we've also seen a bay actually respond and get kills in and amongst that it's almost like if you're a defender and you know that they're pressuring you and an ee1d goes off if you pre-fire a corner, sometimes you'll just get them to run into your kill. Like, it, it kind of signals to you as well that you're probably about to get pushed by a team that uses it this frequently. Probably. We'll have a look how exactly it is going to be going down. Round of a five getting underway. Obeying it looking a little bit better all of a sudden, but we haven't seen them successfully win this site yet. Let's see if they can turn it around a little bit here. We'll see a very similar lineup coming out. I think the Legion coming out from Execration here is a big, you know, it's a big game changer. I know that Legion's kind of considered one of those kind of whatever ops that can fit into anything, but this should really slow the roll coming out from EG. Yeah, and it's one of those things as well. When you look at those places where they can get a bit of pace behind them, like Cool Vibes, like Aqua Push in, like Hookah, which is an immediate push and plant, it's nice to not only have the ability to stop those push and plant well, strategies, but also give yourself some intel and information. You get the audio, everybody gets that, but the Legion themselves gets the sight. Geo is looking for a long firing line to someone playing down in the office entrance, and NVK is the one that's actually going to shut down the opening frag and find Abenai. Yet again, the eternal battle, well, it keeps a raging. Attackers have located a bomb. Drones are going to go out and heavily across the board here to see exactly what is going to be going down. As we delve into a 4v5 situation, Obey not looking too good all of a sudden. However, they've still got plenty of time to bring this back, but so do EG. And EG have a lot of utility left to bring bare. Geo from below is going to start to sledge out all these common positions and see what he can do as drones continue to go out from EG progressively. Well, holding on, picking up his miss their own RGG as the upside and repel pressure comes from the window that we've actually seen get kills before this game. We can see the immediacy of trying to get control of Sunrise below. We hear charges going up from the Zephyr and whether anything leads or it, nothing so far as Necrox is looking for something but does have those frag grenades in pocket. So if they can't find the bodies, might at least be able to find, well, some utility to take out instead. With one left and they know that someone's playing behind bar potentially they're just trying to find some semblance they're setting themselves up as well we can see obviously rotations around on the opposite sides mvk is creeping in from the vip side and they're setting up for a multi-pronged attack here from almost every single direction and this is one of the things that would worry us before about eg's attack is sometimes this would happen a little bit too often and they wouldn't set themselves up to be able to cover it well let's see if they can find a way to make it work this creation will indeed take Geo up off the board, and we'll see Mo below gets a great shot onto Grix, so it takes him straight up off the board, and should be able to push up cool vibes accordingly. See Twitch Jones continue to go out into the site as well as another lion that goes out, as NVK slowly creeps up. But Execration finds another kill! That is the lion off the board. This is great picks coming out, of course, from Execration, really doing the work here. EG's Aquarium push is looking less and less likely as things continue. Excretion is still holding down cool vibes, of course. The Necrox got this really nice angle on the kind of repel as sort of hooker. See how that does go down from MVK. Unable to get his Twitch drone into sight, and he's not got lots of time left remaining on the clock. You can go to move in, but we've still got call out. Sorry, he's still got Forest on the shotgun. He's going to peek out wide. He takes down everything coming out from EG. Has this creation of Forest a call out? Oh, lock it out. Obey. Take round number five. And they're one run away from bringing this to an even scoreline. Well, we said this was going to be the game to watch, and well, so far trying to prove it. 3-2, looking like we might be careening towards the 3-3. Three, three. Obviously, they've got to now go to the third point. They've taken Kitchen, they've taken Hookah, and they're going to opt for Blue Sunrise, which is the usual third point when Mirror's off the board. It's always fair, and it gives you a little bit more malleability in how you can hold it. 
At the same time, this will be the first time we've obviously seen EG attacking it. And so far, the first times they've gone to Hooker and Kitchen, they've taken them. And they've taken them pretty well. So it's down to Obey to kind of open this and set themselves on the 3-3 before we go to the turn of the half. Capcan on the board alongside the Alibi is potentially going to try and find and pick apart some early pushes and attackers. As long as it doesn't get sick pick, I guess is the fair thing to ask. And in the meantime, EG, same roll up, same lineup. Keep the strategy the same because when it's working, it's working very, very well. And you're on a fresh point. You know you're on a fresh point, and that's generally been when you've been at your best on this map so far. I like the camp camp pick coming out here. I think this is. I love a good camp camp pick. You know, good, good old cheeky camp camp. Good old cheeky freaky. We'll see how that works out for call out. But... Yeah, I mean. <sighs> Generally, Capcan is very, very good at slowing down these heavy aggression pushes. We saw it during the Sonics and Orgles game, yeah, where we saw these like heavy rushes coming out from Sonics, and we saw a Capcan come out, and immediately Force Wolves getting two points on the board, and he was doing really, really well with that Capcan anti-push. So, and we do see this really spread out push as well coming out from EG, typically on this, but we haven't seen them attack Blue Bay yet. As you say, it is a fresh site. It is an opportunity to. You know, make things Five different coming out from OB. Yeah, and it's the thing about it is, like, how much they... Um, um, it, please don't tell me he's going to hide in the middle of it. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my God. I don't even begin <laughs> to know They're too what, close together for him to really effectively do this, though. I don't even know what he's really trying to fully pull off, because there's not enough space to have, as you said, the space to not just turn them all off. So like, whatever, we'll, we'll come back to that later. I'm very intrigued this <laughs> because I mean, it is a part of their strategy because they've put two ADSs down on cool Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well, like so. they've, they've thrown a lot there, but I'm curious what the deal with him is lying on top of them to turn them off. Like, is that intentional or is he just accidentally I feel like not... it, it has to be intentional because or, otherwise they wouldn't have put so much investment to cool yeah, so. yeah. So I guess we'll just, maybe he's going to like pull back and jack in the box. Then oh. in the meantime, MVK takes care of the Capgan yet again. That is his, I believe, fifth opening frag across these six rounds. The man is on a mission, and the mission is to kill. And he kills Capgan. This time around, unfortunately, didn't quite get the usage that he expected. Again, I'm this pile <laughs> of alibis. I, every, dis, like, every time I see it, I, I feel like I'm having a fever dream. I feel like this has got a, something to do with the drone hole that's here. There is that drone hole, like, to his left. The drone hole can see the alibis, I guess. Something like that. But mm, there goes one. There goes two, actually. Yeah, he lost two. He's only down to one single alibi, and I hope this doesn't make the whole strategy fall apart. Well, we'll see if it does as we do turn into a 4v5, of course. But a lot of drones are being missed off the board from EG here. But they know where this guy is on cool vice. Swashbone's gonna go down to try and burn his ADSs as MVK is gonna get tricked out by the alibi here, and the push is gonna to continue to come down from him. Very, very low NVK trying to push this desperately. Does hear the Dokubi phone call. Does know there's someone still behind the shield, of course. But the P comes through yet again, and he gets a kill out of it. What? The push comes down again. Another kill for Grexa. How is this working right now? As a continued push does go through. Lion charge, another one goes out. And Grixer continuing to waste time here so far. Zofia Charge is going to go out. Nade goes out as well. Grixer still alive out of this, but eventually does get found out. Great roam strategy from Grixer, though. I mean, he found two bodies from it. He found two bodies. They thought he was down the stairs. He was still hiding behind it. Maybe they thought when the alibis all went, he would rotate. It worked. You can never argue with the results, and it worked, Alibi. Uh, Geo, in the meantime, frantically knocking open this floor, but yet again, EG find themselves in a situation where they're just really, really low on time. They only have 15 seconds, and the Legion Mines are all over the floor, so they've got to find a way through them and then through the bodies inside. A quick charge, and he finds the back Ooh. of Abenai. Swings round and pre fires, and Legion! Yo. Young saves the round for EG. I really think, I really, really, really think that that is serious right now for EG. A 4-2 scoreline, it's very, very strong coming through this. A really good attempt from Obey to bring that in. And a very interesting strategy coming out from Grixer there that actually worked out quite well for him. I feel like that does really prove how good the new Bulletproof Shield is. I mean, man, 300 IQ. 300 IQ. Well...
Fanny Vu, who downed him, he did get his kills, but unfortunately the round did not go in their favor. EG were able to clinch it out with a great clutch from Young coming through. As we'll see, round number seven getting underway will swap things around and Obey will find themselves on the attack. Capital on the board and has a great clear, and it's one of those operators that could be really effective here. We talked about him the many, many times he the gets lion coming out from Obey. Banned. Yeah, the IQ to the lion. Who wants to give uh, EG a little taste of their own medicine? Very interested to see how this does play out now, and if Obey could do similar lion pushes to how uh, EG were, but I feel like EG are a lot more ready for this Attack because they're already bringing the Legion, bomb, they're already bringing bomb. that kind of stuff, but I'm glad to see the Capitao in this lineup. It's, yeah. It was kind of surprising that EG didn't bring a Capitao at all. It's the thing about Capitao is he's just so effective in maps like this, where there are these corners where you know they're going to be holding them. It's so consistent for them to be in these positions where just one firebolt with the kind of radius and range that they have can just give you that forced push, give you that kind of ability to make them run into a sightline and one of the many, many windows or angles or even the top center of the map and the kind of core of the courtyard. There's a lot of places to exploit loose movement and Capital's the man to make people run. Barbed wire going to be going down into sight. Let's also see EG going to be holding on. And yeah, I mean, this wasn't something that Obey was doing initially, but they eventually did bring this kind of setup. Especially with see the Legion and the Mozzie, good welcome additions to this lineup, but also particularly playing the smoke behind that billiards bar. Very, very hard to knock him out of there, even with a Capitao. Well, Abonai is going to try and find NVK and keep their wall going as NVK went for a very aggressive early sprint out, opening up the rotations to double up with Mo, who has a, had a little bit of a quieter map compared to his uh, spin around border, but again, has you know, hasn't really needed to because EG have generally found themselves showing up pretty aplomb so far throughout this. In the meantime, they have all the information they need. They're doubling up on their cover upstairs, and Young is the one that's dug in on cool vibes. And you can already see Geo is under a little bit of attention in Sunrise, but is able to hold his own as he has so consistently throughout this map so far. Oh, 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 but it's going to be Forrest who picks up that opening frag, and VK finally on the opening death scale this as he's going to go down first of all. The Mozzie already off the board. That is a Nitro off the board as well for EG. Not looking too good all of a sudden for them, as Obey will take quick control of the VIP. We still have Mo actually on the roam as well. Yeah, Mo's playing off on the far side. The E1D comes out, and Geo's in a very, well, tough position there as he dances around the pillar of the hookah lounge door, and it, in a way, saves his life. In the meantime, you can see that the Romans are covering their way back towards point. In the meantime, finding bodies along the way, Abunai gets the trade there against Mo, but again, taking care of Twitch. That's a big gun out of the hands of Forrest. Grixer is on a fair shoulder of damage there as Geo is still battling the dance, but allows Young to creep forward and put Execration in the grave. But Abunai has double killed his way across and now it's the Maestro in a one versus three, a site he was familiar with on previous maps, but he can't quite find no anybody. Info. And unfortunately, everybody is finding him. Call out. Closes it down. Great push coming out from Obey there, using pretty much the same strategy that EG were doing, except they had the Capital on the board. We didn't see too much effect in this coming out from the Capital there, but at a basic level, that is kind of exactly what EG were doing there. So now EG are going to have to find a way of dealing with it. We'll see how that does indeed go through, as we'll see a hookah lounge in Billy's room once again. Well, Obey, they bring it back within one round, but they still have a lot of work left to do. Hookah is going to be the second showing in a row and the fifth time that we've seen it so far. And, uh, you know, it's it's the go-to first point at this point. IQ to Capitao is the change here. They're bringing the line and not baiting it. And the Capitao, to be fair, didn't get a huge amount of a run last time. Didn't quite find the ability to throw any of those smokes down and I think that's the thing about it is there were situations and positions where they might have been able to. If you look at the firefight where Geo was dancing around for a while, one bolt swung around the corner could have really made that very uncomfortable for Geo. Yeah, no, it, it definitely could have done. I'm surprised that Geo survived as long as he did in that position without that wall being reinforced, but we'll move into round number eight. We'll have a look if EG are able to respond. They're three rounds away from bringing in the series, but things are looking a bit squiffy for them all of a sudden as Obey have... Yeah, they have a really good idea about how they want to play this. 
There's a, l a little bit more protection from that lion there where Gio is dancing the dance of trying to not die. And I think that's a fair decision because, you know, everything that can kind of keep him alive in that situation is going to be something that, well, you know, it's worth the kind of trade-off and the positioning there. Obviously, they've it looks like they're setting themselves up for more of a kind of defensive hold in terms of the dying firefight with enough to slow them across the roll and the push. As call-out wastes no time in getting care of the default cameras and... Yet again, here comes the push against this DJ side, against the kind of master bedroom. Well, Griggs is actually going to double up from the far hookah. And this is, again, where I said this Capitao should be. You, you put him on here, you allow him to either bolt off the door or aggressively push Young or Geo when he eventually shows up, and it just can allow you a bit more space. Talking of Geo, there he is, creeping around underneath with the mute. He's just trying to keep himself alive and make himself a bit of a problem in future. Yeah, because he has that nit uh, the nitro cell for the board as well, and he can play down there for quite a while, I would imagine, as, yeah, he does have nitro cells. There's a shotgun, he has, of course, his trusty SMG-11. We'll see how that does work out for him as Obey begin their attack, and we'll see Mode again could be holding down on security. But, um, generally you've seen Night EG with a big change up in their strategy, bringing the pulse along as well from MVK. I think this is exactly kind of what they want here to maybe be Obey to be moving into this, but the problem is is that Obey have literally the best roam clear setup you could possibly have here without a Jackal. Yeah, they're looking for the firefights, and well, Twitch is looking for Young, and it got a little bit still, a little bit stale, and Young takes a moment, and he 3 two, one goes, and he manages to find some safety on the cool vibe stairs. In the meantime, the calls are being answered, and NVK is getting closer, gets his first semblance of a heartbeat, and finds it again as he sees the rotation, has the Nitro, and with the double up of uh, Geo's, it means that if he does use his down here and then rotates to help Geo, well, this could be a big kind of swing. Doesn't find the kill, but there he is heading over to Sunrise. Oh. And the smoke attempted cover there doesn't quite come together as Forrest pushes up, gets a double, and Geo finds Abenai, but Grixer finds Young, and big trades are going upstairs, and he can't quite find their way up. Cool vibes, and they can't quite get control again as Obey for four. Great takes coming out from Obey across the board here, as they're able to even out the scoreboard, as you said, it's a 4-4. Four, four. EG have absolutely no answer to this right now. They tried already with the pulse down below, they didn't manage to pick up the pick. And yeah, they've kind of completely fallen apart right now, and it looks like Forrest really leading the charge here so far for Obey. We may have a game on our hands here, Fluke. Good. I want a game. I want it. Kitchen service. Yet again, they're going to lose two and opt to rotate. This is exactly the same as what we saw from the first half of the game. And, well, this round went in the favor of um, the attackers. So I guess it will be up to Obey to keep that trend rolling or you to try and find some semblance of control, which steadily looks like it's slipping through their hands. Yeah, just a little bit. It's been a very good roam clear from Obey. As you said, they're bringing the right operators, whether they intend to or not, based on what EG are doing, and they're moving them well. It doesn't really matter what's going on underneath, because at that point, they've already started applying pressure onto the point itself. They're forcing the roamers to fall back to the point, and then they've got the cover to then kill them when they pop their heads up. So it's just really, really well thought out roam clear from Obey. So um, a couple of concerns here now from EG's side. If they don't find around here now, within the next couple of rounds, I doubt that they take the map. If they can, they can bring us to overtime. Now, Obey gets to choose what side they start in OT. Potentially, they chose attack, but we'll obviously, we'll never know really for sure, but it feels like Obey already went into this matchup knowing this was gonna be pretty attack aside. so hopefully they did indeed choose that attack. And if they did, EG's probably gonna be in a bit of trouble. Also, on top of that, Obey, even if they did pick defense, they had a couple of really good defenses for their last two. So, we'll see if EG can adapt to what's going on, but they really need either this round or the next round. Well, let's see if they can make either of those two work. Necrox still steadily opening up the rotations on two point. And it's always a worry when you do that against Obey, because you never really know how quick they're going to be moving on their attacks. They can hit both instant pace and slow as they like. and. Oftentimes, they can make either of them work, too. NVK is chilling around the theater side and waiting for some pressure to come along the top as a mozzie shoots the drone. 
But he's all out of pests, so we'll assume that he's already managed to capture a few, or is just waiting for the cover. In the meantime, Geo is slowly building a castle out of reason traps to allow himself some control underneath and waits for the bay inside the doorway. But there is a lot of aggression from Obey coming out against NVK, who suffers half health, and you can see all of them are generally stacked up, and he's forced to try and pull himself out and rotate. Another line call goes out, and Mozzie gets zapped by the Twitch drone and baited into a firefight with Forrest, who's got the opening frag to pass two rounds, but it's Mo that opens oh. it this time against Callout. That's the line already off the board. That is a massive pick from EG coming out. The one Doku be has already gone out, and this is looking really bad for EG all of a sudden. They haven't, sorry, for OB. They haven't been able to find that opening pick, and their role has indeed been slowed so far. Let's see how things go down as we move further into the round, but... I'm not confident that Obey are going to be able to take this without their line. They've got a lot of control now all of a sudden, but they need some picks on the board if they want to make this happen. Well, there's some opening of the floor to give themselves some angles and Necrox below. So far, not really had the best kind of days in terms of these two maps, but with the smoke canisters, has a bit of utility and the ability to get some rotation and movement in. They have control of Penthouse. They have their ability to lock down the service entrance, but Geo is going to see if he can find anything. No, unfortunately not. Mo, in the meantime, has pulled all the way back, and NVK has done the same. They've got the opening body. They've been able to take care of Callout. They put Abinai to a pretty huge chunk of damage as well. So why throw their life away? Make them work for it. Crossbow ball should start to come down here from Grixer initially. And there we go. It has gone down from above. That should allow a service entrance push to come through Execration. Or maybe even a kitchen side push, it looks like, as those crossbow bolts have been effective. But with only 25 seconds left to go on the clock, they really need to make something work. And Forrest will start to do it. And VK off the table. That's a Nitro down. It's exactly what they need, but Necrox also needs to be removed if they want to go for a flan. Grixer gets one onto Mo, but Necrox will score the kill onto Forest through the vertical play. Geo gets one of his own, Abinai goes down, Necrox goes to the white peak, denies to the defuse, but Jung will pick up the kill. It's all down to Grixer to try and make something happen, and he'll just save KD, and EG will bring in the round. Operators, you have run out of time. 5-4. We find ourselves batting back to on the kitchen hold. The first time it was a success on EG's attack and the first time it was a success on their defense. It does mean they've got to rotate to another point and they are not going to go back to Hooker. They're going to instead play blue and see if they can make that come through for them. And, you know, why not? Because to be fair, if they get this, they're still looking at having to go back to Hooker. They're still looking at having to go to that third point. But if they go to Hooker, they're going to have to look to take this. So it's, you know, or you're looking at a potential overtime. You've got to take this point. However, this way is going to break down. May as well take it when it might be a bit of a surprise. Yeah, no, uh, th I think it's also just EG. They just kind of wanted to do something different here and not wanting to go Defenders back to that hookah. But yeah, by just got to change it up and we'll see if EG attackers. can take this. Of course, if they do take this, they put themselves at a severe advantage moving through because they need one more round. And of course, we already know they can defend Kitchen. So, you know, like, you know, th that's how you see the rounds going down. Like, if EG can win this, then they, they can lose on an offsite. Obey will go 6-5, but then EG can go back to Kitchen, and then you hopefully think that they'd be able to win there. But I think it was less the site and more the fact they were able to pick up that line so early. Yeah, that was the thing. They were very quick and well, very lucky, I think, in a way, to be able to pull him out first. And I say lucky, it was good positioning that time, and all the aggression seemed to be funneled against NVK. So it almost allowed them to set themselves up on the crossfire, and as the Lion charged him from the opposite side, assuming that Forrest on the Twitch, as per usual, was going to be the first to make the firefight, he was kind of taken out of it just by a little bit of too much aggression. An early E1D is going to allow Obey to, well, try and find something. And now oh. finds Young in the meantime and starts putting bodies to uh, bullets towards the Legion on the far side of MVK, who is able to rotate out of there. The calls are still going off on Geo on this front Lambo door. He's just going to hold the angle and wait for the body to swing around. In the meantime, that is how EG are responding to this. Hold the angles, keep the phone calls going, and let them swing into you. Win on reactions, and there is MVK taking care of Forrest and proving he can do just that. Forrest being a big, big frag coming out from Obey. He's going to go down early on. That's definitely going to help EG. But the role will not be so just yet. So call out continues to put out that EU1D and they'll continue to take control of the kitchen and completely cut this kitchen site in half. Geo, however, has managed to find his way above. We'll see EG 
Still holding on. No holding on to cool vibes as well to cut off the rotate. If they did indeed try and push out from kitchen, as Geo opening a bit of a vertical play here, but Mo will move down and Execration will take him out. Now with 3v4s, crossbow bolts are going to go down deep into sight. Necro's going to try and crawl his way up as that's the final E1D off the board. Necro's still holding it down as Geo moves down the cool vibes. And this is not looking good for EG. They're a man down. There's loads of time on the table for Obey, but they have no lion charges remaining. But they do obviously still have, well, buckets of utility to push the point and get aggressive with it. Flash grenades pop round and there's some more explosions, but so far EG are just trying to survive on the point. Geo is going to C4 his way down and potentially draw attention as he goes for a bit of a cross push here. Himself rotating around to the opposite side and seeing if he can close down from Lambo door. But the cool will dampen that. NVK oh. and Necrox in the meantime, yet again, as I said, lean into the aggression, but they do lose the Legion. Abenai who has been an outstanding player so far, is refusing to bow down just yet and is still yeah, consistently putting bodies in a 2-2 with 40 seconds on the board. There is so much possibility here for the attackers and the defenders to be able to pull this together. This is looking so, so good right now. Callout will indeed go for the plant right now, but Smokes are going to go out. That's a little bit too late. However, Geo managed to go through his rotate to courtyard, but will get picked up on the cross. It's all down to Necrox to try and bring this in. He'll see Callout, but won't be able to find the kill just yet. And Abanai holding the very long angle, of course, through courtyard. She'll be able to find Necrox, but no, Necrox finds one. Can he find another? Abanai will line him so heavily up. Abanai's got to be very, very aware that there could be a flank coming through just now. Necrox going to be moving through with the SMG 11 in hand. He knows where Abanai is no smokes remaining for him he's going to chase the kill so far but abadai just going to pull off very very lightly here into kitchen instead necros will push him up he knows that abadai's right there next to him but he'll go down to it no bail lights will keep themselves in it by taking round number 10. only the second time the diffuse has gone down this map it's been rare i think it's fair to say it's definitely been an aggressive firefight laden map and well, look at us, 5-5, five, five. still pushing, and still hurdling towards potentially another OT. Yeah, no, it's definitely definitely looking to get there. And now EG are going to have to go back to a site that they've already lost once. Things not looking good for their side. They haven't brought the Warden this time, though. I wonder if this is going to get six picks, or if he's brought it for a shield, potentially. No, it's going to get six picks. The what? It's a, it's a bit of a bait, a bit of a bait and switch there. But I mean, if you were a bay and you're looking at the lineup and you're looking at the point, you're like, Attackers yeah, that's to gonna get sick though. I'd like, it's so particular to bring Attackers a warden, to and it's so bomb. particular the points where you can make it work, and it's so particular the play styles you can make it work against. And flashes mm -hmm. and smokes are not what Obey is doing right now. I, I mean, I don't know. Like these days, I kind of just figure out that Warden is. I mean, there is, there are smokes on the table. We haven't seen too many of them go down, but there are yeah, smokes that, on the table pretty much every round from Obey. So I don't think the Wardens are completely out there. Pick. We already saw how effective a bulletproof shield can be in these kind of attacks from Grexa. So I don't think it's completely out there to bring a Warden here. But I mean, we've already seen a decent amount of Warden today. We'll have a look what EG want to do here as we move into round number 11. But they need this round. Yeah, and you know, it's it's a big and it's a bit of a tough one to kind of pull together here, but both teams have been able to do that pretty repeatedly against each other. Young suffers a little bit of early damage, as does Geo, potentially from the Twitch drone of Forest or just a missed impact, but either way, they're still setting themselves up, and Abunai oh. is able to open up against him. Okay. Yet again, such an early pick coming through the kitchen push so early on. How does MVK not expect that to go down? That is not good at all. EG getting punished for the same mistake so far. But it's MVK this time got picked up so early on. We'll see how the rest of this does work out. But we still have that kitchen control moving into the favor of Obey. And if it does go into the favor of Obey completely, then I think things are over for EG. Oh, a very early smoke coming out from Necrox there. Potentially to try and some slow down this push, but to be Abadai picks the kill to Necros. Well, the line goes off once again, but no one gets caught in that roar, unfortunately. And Young is actually able to put down Abadai. He's already done, well, huge amounts, dropping the Legion in the smoke this early on. And now 
out a very, very big pair of losses to take. Execration finding Mo Digger, and that's another body down, and another body down. Echo drops, leaving just Young stood alone. Finds the lion upstairs, finds the body oh. downstairs in the diffuser, and that's a double kill for the big gun of Maestro that has had a showing on border, but not quite on this map. They're going to uh, Capital ball it off, fire it, and try and get a plant down. But as the spots come out, and a minute 10, Obey surely have this in their favor right now. Reload does come through from Young. Another, another Capital charge is going to go down. The hat camp will be destroyed by Young as he tries to push through the smoke. Pulls this 2 2 k here. Going to go for those pre-fires to see where everyone is, but Obey are completely in Africa right now, completely as far away from the site as they can. As Young goes to another peak, just trying to see where these people are. He's going to see one, but gets taken down. Almost a beautiful clutch coming out from Young. Gets the 3k, but able to bring it in for, o for EG. As Obey put themselves on match point. Things looking very, very good for him on coastline. However, EG can now go back to that kitchen site which was such an issue for Obey last time. This could be a big potential double OT, but uh, I feel like if we go to OT, I feel like Obey bring it in. Yeah, I like, from where I'm looking at this moment, it's either Obey take it this round or Obey take it in OT because their rounds have just been steadily getting better and better. In a weird way, it also looks like EGs are getting worse and worse. Well, They're... actually, um, let, let's break it down, right? If we went to OT now, and EG, EG win this site, which means they're undefeated on Kitchen, then yep. if we went to OT, and we assume EG starts defense on OT, that should mean that they would go Kitchen again. And if they can continue to win there, and then they can win their attack as well, then it attack should be an EG victory, but we've seen Obey, as you said, can. they've been making steady improvements to their rounds, they've been definitely doing better, and we saw in the last two defenses, they definitely brought it in. So, now you've got to think about, you know, where is OT going to go if we do get there? Can Obey kind of figure out the issues that they had here last time? Because they lost call out so early in the round, and I really think that was a big reason why they lost that round. The lack of the line here was really punishing. Yeah. It's also worth noting, obviously, so far throughout this game, defenders have only won three times. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely, obviously, swung to the favor of the attackers. So even looking at this round, yes, this is a point they took before on Kitchen, but, you know, Obey have been learning. They've been kind of adapting. They've been getting more and more attuned to what EG are doing on these defenses. And, you know, as soon as they've been able to kind of swing in and get these first frags, things have very steadily been falling in their favor, and it's more akin to the aggression that we saw from them before. Well, we'll have a look how things are going to move through as we see EG on what could be their final defense here, but we'll have a look if we are going to be going to that OT, of course, just after this round is going to be finishing up, but we see pretty much the same strategy coming out from EG that they were in the last time they went here. So we'll see Jung playing around in the lobby. Attackers have located wow. a bomb. No meeting yet. Yeah, everyone's being a bit slow and steady. I think Obey realize that well, if they can put it to bed now and they can push themselves onto the third map, they might be in good stead, as we have talked about Clubhouse as one of those kind of hit or miss maps, especially for evil geniuses. At the same time, EG, they're, you know, they're clutching on here. They knew they were in the lead. They knew they had a good solid hold on this map and they don't want it to slip away just yet. MVK swings around the corner. It's quite fine. Abunai, Abunai finds him, but there's Gio downing one and killing the other in a big moment, but Callout finds Mo in the meantime. Grixer is still on the floor, so it's technically a three versus three, but without anyone to pick up that frag, well, they're going to get them back up and they're going to use the E1D to ensure it. That is a big use of utility, however, that has otherwise been a big problem for Obey, utilized and forced out. And they're still going to know that Gio is indeed over there doing the work as well even though he is using his ERC-7. So then we got, forgot to mention as well about Vigil, is that he can not use his ERC, and if he's using it while the Lion's Guns go off, he will not get pinged out by it, but there goes one defender, as Grixer easily picks that up in the Koya, but Geo does refrag, but gets traded out himself as well. So it's been all trades so far, but it's left Necrox in a 1v3 to try and bring it in. Nades are gonna go out deep into sight, and it's Necrox to try and clutch it out. Not gonna know that someone did just rotate into the lobby and he knows there's people above him right now. This is not looking good for him whatsoever. Someone right above him, he will smoke it out to make sure he can't get pushed from there at all. 
as he smokes out multiple entrances here, but from above, he will get punished for it and obey Alliance. I'll bring it in. Wow. It was a good attempt, and you know how far in the rounds we're going just shows how bitterly these two teams want it. For the second time tonight, we're going to be hitting that fabled third map in these best of threes, and we kind of wanted this. We wanted a clubhouse, and I guess it's time to see if it lives up to our...